I've reviewed a lot of mini PCs ranging from the simple and efficient Intel N100 powered models to the latest high performance Ryzen 8000 powered ones and everything in between. However, they all have one thing in common. They come with Windows 11 pre-installed. What if you're a Linux user or want to explore the Linux operating system? Which of these mini PCs is the best fit for running Linux? Let's find out. It's the money. Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems here. As I go through this, it's important to be upfront that my ultimate choice for the best mini PC for Linux will be based on the selection of mini PCs I have on hand. These are of course not the only mini PCs out there, so the more important takeaway from this video will be the considerations I outlined for selecting a good machine for Linux. This video is intended for Linux newbies or those curious about Linux, not necessarily the seasoned Linux gurus. Due to the open source and highly configurable nature of Linux operating systems, most if not all of the considerations I'm about to outline can be overcome. While this level of tweaking may be a bit intimidating to beginners, most intermediate level users will be able to make the appropriate software or even hardware changes to get their favorite flavor of Linux running smoothly on basically any computer. My goal is to demonstrate an ideal mini PC for the best out of the box Linux experience. First up, is the brand. My inbox is flooded with manufacturers and sellers asking if I want to check out their latest and greatest mini PCs. Quite honestly, I decline 70 to 80% of those requests just based on my independent research into the company and its products. If a company has a history of unreliable products, poor or non-existent after sales support, a limited operational history or frequent rebranding, I don't even accept the review sample. I learned my lesson early on with one of my first mini PC reviews of a Knopflink mini PC. While the PC has had no problem and actually operated pretty much 24 seven for over a year, the company didn't last as long as their PC and has completely disappeared. With all that said, I've only agreed to review mini PCs from a handful of companies such as Beadlink, Geekcom, Minus Forum, and GMK Tech. While this is not a definitive list, the takeaway is always do your own research into the company and its product before making a purchase. All right, Let's dive into the hardware considerations for selecting a good mini PC for Linux. Grabbing the latest and greatest PCs and installing Linux might seem like the best move, but having used Linux for nearly 30 years, I can tell you that's not always the case. For example, the Ryzen 8000 series and Intel Core Ultra series mini PCs boast AI capabilities thanks to their integrated MPUs. While that sounds impressive, the support for these features on Linux is still pretty limited and the performance is notably worse compared to Windows. One major consideration for me was how well these machines perform on Linux versus Windows. If a mini PC's performance on Linux is significantly weaker, it's a no-go. Another key point is how quickly your Linux distro integrates updates for new hardware. The Linux drivers for the Ryzen 8945HS's integrated graphics were ready almost immediately, but it might take a while for those drivers to reach your kernel, especially if you're using a long-term support version. Experienced users can update their kernel or manually add the drivers, but beginners might find this daunting. Avoiding the latest bleeding edge hardware is wise if you're not comfortable with intermediate or more advanced tweaks. Now, here's where it might get a bit controversial. I decided to eliminate all current AMD Ryzen based mini PCs from consideration due to the use of a MediaTek Wi-Fi adapter that has multiple issues on both Windows and Linux. This adapter isn't new, but it still struggles with latency and Wi-Fi dropouts on various Wi-Fi 6E access points, despite several tweaks and patches. However, if your router works fine with the MediaTek card, if you're using a LAN connection, or you're comfortable with simply swapping out the MediaTek Wi-Fi card for a more reliable one like this Intel AX210, then these PCs are still worth considering. For instance, the B-Link Sear 6 
is a fantastic Linux desktop, and the GMK M6 offers excellent price to performance value for Linux, just like it does for Windows. Lastly, Intel Raptor Lake models are also ruled out. Reports of stability issues with Intel's 13th and 14th gen mobile processors are less common, but once problems with their desktop CPU started appearing and Intel's response was underwhelming, I decided to pass on reviewing any Raptor Lake mini PCs. Recommending a product with potential underlying issues to my audience is not something I can do in good conscience until I'm confident the problem is solved. So those are the key hardware considerations to keep in mind when picking a mini PC for Linux. So what does that leave us with? From the mini PCs I have on hand, I selected the Minisforum UN1290. This is one of Minisforum's Venus series PCs running on a 12th gen Intel i9-12900HK. This CPU features 14 cores consisting of six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. When this Alder Lake processor first hit the market, it took some time for non-rolling release distros to effectively use the new e-cores in the Intel CPU. However, today, not only does every major Linux distro support this architecture, but in most cases, Linux on Alder Lake delivers better performance than Windows, and we'll see that in a bit. But first, let's quickly go over the specs and features of the Minisforum UN1290. As I mentioned, it runs on an i9-12900HK, a 14-core, 20-thread mobile CPU with a base clock of 2.5 GHz and a max boost clock of 5 GHz, with the E-cores maxing out at 3.8 GHz. As an i9, it's a pretty powerful CPU with a default TDP of 45 watts and a max turbo power of 115 watts. For graphics, the 12900HK has an integrated 96EU Iris XE based iGPU. This model comes with 32GB of DDR4 memory and a 512GB PCIe Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSD with the option to install a second 2.5 inch SATA SSD. For ports and I.O., up front we have a clear CMOS button, power button, headset jack, and two 10 gigabit per second Type A ports. Around the back, there's the DC input for the included 120 watt power supply, a full featured USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C port. There's also one HDMI and one Display Port for a total of three possible displays, a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, and two USB 2.0 ports. Not a horrible I/O selection, but it is no noticeably missing Thunderbolt or USB 4. Now, this, like basically all mini PCs, comes with Windows 11 pre-installed. I went through the installation process to get some baseline performance results. However, after doing so, I quickly purged Windows from the system so I can install and test three popular yet different Linux operating systems. Ubuntu 24.04 LTS, Manjaro Linux, and Fedora 40. While I did run extensive stability tests on each of these distros, I'm not going to inundate you with a bunch of benchmark results and charts. In fact, the only cross-platform benchmark I ran was Geekbench 6, and as I predicted, all three Linux distros had the same or better single-core and multi-core CPU performance compared to Windows. I also ran a 24-hour suite of tests using the Pharonix test suite, which stressed the overall system, the CPU, and the operating system. Each distro passed with no errors or failures. That's great news as it means there are no hardware or software incompatibilities with three of the most popular Linux operating systems on this mini PC. I selected each of these distributions because they're very popular and widely used, yet implement different aspects of the Linux operating system in unique ways. They also have large community support infrastructures, which are super helpful for new users. Finally, I picked them because all three have very user-friendly and intuitive installers. Once you download the installation ISO and flash it to a USB drive, installation is simple. The UN1290 is already configured to boot from a bootable USB by default, so just plug in the installation media 
and restart the PC. All three distributions are similar in this regard, so I'll use Ubuntu for this demo. Like most Linux distros, you boot right into a live version of the operating system, which you can explore and test out before installing. When you're ready, you can launch the installer and follow the very simple process. At this point, you can choose to install Ubuntu alongside Windows for a dual boot system, or you can delete the entire SSD and, and just install Ubuntu, which is what I opted to do. If you ever installed any software on a PC, you shouldn't have any problems installing these Linux operating systems. They all use easy to follow installation windows that are less complicated and much faster than the Windows installation process. After a quick reboot, you're in your new operating system and on your new desktop environment. And once installed, the first thing you want to do is update the operating system. With all three versions of Linux I'm demonstrating today, this can be done using the included graphical user interface, which will be familiar to most users switching from Windows or Mac. It can also be done with some simple commands in the terminal, while you can do everything you need without ever opening the terminal. I highly encourage you to get to know the power of the terminal. For example, within the terminal, I was able to upgrade the operating system and every application with just a couple of short commands. I also installed and ran the Geekbench tests, performed stress tests, and even coded, compiled, and ran a simple Tetris-like game in both Python and C++, but more on that in a bit. One key benefit to Linux I want to point out is that once installed and updated, the mini PC is good to go. There's no need to find, download, and install a bunch of third-party drivers. Everything is included in the Linux kernel, which is the core of the Linux operating system. Ubuntu and Fedora install with Linux version 6.8 out of the box, which is plenty new for this Minus Forum UN 1290. This is one reason I chose it. However, if you want to use the latest tech like the B-Link Core Ultra 7 or the Ryzen 8000 series mini PCs, you would need to manually upgrade to kernel 6.9 to get the latest performance improvements. Manjaro, being a rolling release distro, came with kernel 6.9 out of the box, which I was able to easily upgrade to 6.10 right in the settings menu. Now, besides running Geekbench and a series of performance and stability tests on each distro, I spent most of the time simply using the Minus Forum mini PC with each of the OSs. While the 12900HK is well suited for any computing task, productivity, content creation, database management, CAD, engineering, scientific simulation, and even as a media server, I used the UN1290 as a development and programming system. Admittedly, it was very basic coding. I took the simple Tetris Python script I wrote during my last mini PC video and continued to improve and tweak it. I also converted it from Python to C++. To be honest, I had ChatGPT do the conversion because my C++ skills are very rusty. Of course, ChatGPT didn't get it right, so I spent quite a bit of time debugging the code. I mention all this to say that the mini PC was super responsive and snappy on all three distros. I installed and used multiple editors from simple text editors like Nano and Idle to more feature rich IDEs like PyCharm and VS Code. I built the code, compiled, ran, debugged, recompiled and ran again over and over. The PC executed everything flawlessly and instantaneously. I ran into zero issues running Linux on this PC. Now, finally, before we wrap up, I know there are several mini PCs on the market that come pre-installed with Linux operating systems. System76 makes the Meerkat, Linux Mint makes the Mintbox Mini, and Star Labs makes the Byte. These are all good mini PCs that have the benefit of coming with a pre-installed and configured version of Linux. However, the problem I have with these and the reason I've turned down the opportunity to review them is that they're all significantly overpriced for their specs. In some cases, they cost up to twice the price of an equivalently configured Windows mini PC, which as I just demonstrated, can run Linux perfectly. Now, 
To finish up, I just want to reiterate the Minus Form UN1290 isn't the definitive choice for the best mini PC for Linux, nor is this an all-encompassing list of mini PCs. However, for beginners looking for a relatively inexpensive yet powerful PC with a tiny footprint, it meets my criteria for an excellent choice. The UN1290 handles Linux exceptionally well with no hardware or software incompatibilities and it provides a smooth, responsive experience across various tasks from basic coding to more intensive applications. So if you're ready to dive into the world of Linux or just need a solid, compact PC, the Minisform UN1290 is a fantastic option to consider.